So this is uh, introduction to computer systems and in today's class we will discuss about primary as well as secondary storage devices. So this is especially for you my dear students and young researchers and you can reach me at dr.christoanand at the rate of gmail.com. So before beginning the session once again let me thank God for giving me this golden opportunity to deliver this useful session to share my knowledge among my fellow national international participants, students and young researchers. So in today's class about the primary as well as secondary storage devices we will understand the characteristics of storage units. Then in primary storage we discuss about random access memory, programmable random access memory. Okay, uh, You will be having like uh, read only memory and then programmable read only memory. Then about the common registers, sequential access devices, about the different magnetic tapes. Then in the secondary storage devices, we will understand the characteristics, advantages, applications okay and about direct access storage devices about the disk system and optical devices okay so this is a short introduction to storage unit as you know storage means memory you are going to store it okay so in the computer system we will be storing both the information or maybe data and then some set of instructions so the instructions will tell you how to perform okay so information or maybe data and instructions are being fed to the computer. So we have two types of storage. One is primary storage as well as secondary storage. Primary storage you can also call it as the internal memory. So you will be having like program instructions or maybe input data and then temporary or maybe intermediate results we will be having. So this internal memory you can also call it as the main memory. Okay, So this is primary memory. Secondary memory means it is stored external to the computer. Okay, so maybe for not for uh, temporary but for permanent storage. Uh, primary memory is for temporary intermediate results, but secondary uh, storage is for permanent or maybe long term uh, storage of programs or maybe instructions and data or information. So these are the characteristics of storage units we will be having like speed of operation of computer, speed is high, efficiency is better and cost effective okay and then the amount of data it can store for example like uh, 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 128 GB okay maybe a hard disk you can have terabyte 1 TB 1 TB of data. So the storage unit is graded according to the characteristics maybe we will have access time. So it is nothing but the time required to locate as well as retrieve the data from the storage unit. So it is a fast access to data and programs. So if you have a fast access to data and programs, we will be having better efficiency. So, so this is the storage capacity. It is nothing but the amount of data that can be stored by the storage unit. So large capacity is what everybody wants. If you have large amount of storage we can store many information okay so smallest unit of data is nothing but the bit like 8 bits it is nothing but one byte okay so group of 8 bits form a byte and storage capacity is defined in the computer fundamentals okay like a 32 uh, bytes or maybe words as well so 1 kb is equal to 2 uh, maybe like a, you can have 1024 bytes as well so that is uh, the total we have with the case of uh, uh, bytes and then 4 KB memory means 4 into 1024, 1 KB means okay 2 into 1024, 4 KB means 4 into 1024. Okay. <coughs> so storage consists of primary as well as secondary uh, units we will be having kilobytes, okay, megabytes, gigabytes. So 1 KB 1024, 2 KB, 2 multiplied by 1024, 4 KB, 4 multiplied by 1024. Okay. So 1 MB, then 1 GB, 1 TB. Okay. So you will be having different uh, forms of storage. Cost. So low cost is what everybody wants. For example, you take in the case of print drive, you take in flash card, or maybe you take in the case of hard disk floppy disk everything will be having some sizes and 
cost effective. Earlier it used to be very much costly, but now very very cheap. Okay. So storage units with faster access time and of course higher storage capacity and low cost are considered to be superior. So primary storage we will be having faster access time, lesser storage capacity as well as higher cost when you compare to the secondary storage units. So primary storage or maybe main memory is a part of the computer system which stores programs or maybe data or maybe intermediate results as well. Okay. So primary storage is a main part of the computer system where it will be having small small locations and every location has one serial number or maybe unique number that is being assigned to it. This you call it to be the address of the location. Okay, so every location, for example, like 6 A E D F F, like a location will be there. Okay, so that will be giving you the address of the location and it will be identifying the location. Okay. So every location will be having some capacity. In the capacity, we can store bits like 1 KB, 2 KB, okay, 1000 KB, 1 MB, 1 GB, and so on. So normally computers they will be coming in GB. You can have you cannot have one terabyte of data, but in hard disk you can have terabyte. Okay. So the number of bits that a location can store is ca called as the length of the word or maybe word length, and every location will be having the same number of bits. So this is the primary storage. We will have primary memory size will be having few KB okay to several thousand KBs as well as MB megabyte on the larger machines. Okay, so Primary storage, you can call it to be volatile, okay. When the power is turned off, data is lost, okay. So that is the major drawback, okay. So uh, primary storage, you can also call it as the random access memory, okay. So random access memory means uh, you can uh, actually randomly select and you can use the storage location for storage and then retrieval of the data, okay. Random access memory you can also call as the read write memory. You can also read the data and you can also write the data. For example, you take in the case of CD, CD, you can only read, okay, like uh, you cannot write. But DVD, you can both do read as well as write, okay. So that is the random access memory. So data can be read from and then written on these units. So when the path is switched off, data stored in RAM is lost. That is the only drawback. Okay. So we will have word 1, word 2, word 3 and then word in. So this is the words in the main memory. We will be having B1, B2 and B3 which are the bits of the words. Okay. So we will be having every address. For each word we will be having address 1, address 2, address 3 up to address n. So this is the address of the location. For each address we will be having one serial number. So that will be identifying the memory of the location. Then read on only memory, read only memory, read only means only read, no write, okay. So in this memory data is permanently stored, so the information can only be read and new data cannot be written on this memory, yes, CD you will have this thing, okay. So however, the contents of the ROM, read only memory are not lost, when you turn off the power, the, uh, the contents are not lost, but in random access memory, when you turn off the power, data is lost okay so this memory is non volatile and of course the memories are considered to be field stores or maybe permanent stores okay so you can perform these functions for writing special programs what you call to be micro programs and every program will be having as a substitute for the hardware okay so once information is stored in the rom chip uh, read only memory chip it cannot be altered or maybe new data cannot be added then we have programmable read only memory. So we will have ROMs which are program, programmable. Okay. So a special PROM programmer is used to enter the program. Okay. So once the chip has been programmed, information cannot be altered because it is read only memory. It cannot be altered. Okay. So it is programmable. We have to feed, we have to write the program by the programmer. And after that, it cannot be changed, it cannot be altered. ROM is non-volatile, so data, uh, data is not lost, okay, data cannot be changed, data cannot be altered, but it, it will not be lost, okay, so data is not lost when power is switched off, okay, and then EPROM, erasable programmable read-only memory, 
you can erase the data which is previously stored okay and you can write new data on the chip okay so this is this is the difference between prom and then e prom prom the data will not be lost okay and you cannot change or we alter the information but e prom you can erase it okay you can erase it and you can write new data and then we have cache memory cache or maybe cache memory it's a special type of high speed memory so the memory cannot be accessed by the user so main function is nothing but you have to make the data you have to make the information you have to make the instructions possible stored in the uh, memory and of course it should be very fast so uh, the access time of the memory is actually very high compared to the execution time of the gpu so just like uh, like the other memories it will be very small but only thing only difference with the cache memory it is is that it is very fast okay and it is being used by the central processing unit as well as the main memory okay so this uh, memory you consider to be very fast so you can call it as the high speed buffer okay. so cache is going to store these segments of the program as well as data and it makes available this data to the cpu at a very fast rate. then you have registers so for retaining the information temporarily we can use registers so it is nothing but memory units which are not actual parts of the main memory but definitely it will allow efficient movement of information between various units okay so the registers it is going to receive the information temporarily it will be holding and make it available okay so um, you know, for example for example whenever you are going to store this information temporarily you can store it in register then if you go if you have to access you can get this information okay. so the computer uses a number of registers maybe you will have r1 r2 r3 r4 and so on okay where every register will be performing a specific function so these are the common registers we have memory address register memory buffer register program control register accumulator register instruction register and then input output register okay so memory address register it is going to hold the address of the current or maybe active memory location memory buffer register is nothing but where the data is read to or maybe data is written that is buffer data is read or maybe written program control register it is going to hold the address of the next instruction okay and then accumulator register accumulator means accumulation collection okay so it is going to hold the initial data intermediate results or maybe temporary results and then final data of the program which is to be executed and then instruction register register is going to hold the current instruction which is going to be executed and then input output register it is going to have the function of this input as well as output device and then you have the secondary storage so secondary uh, capacity of this primary storage is actually limited so you cannot accommodate all the data so that is the reason you are going to use secondary storage medium which is going to store large amounts of data okay so the cost of the secondary memory is less compared to the primary memory however the access time of the primary storage is very very fast okay because it is temporary okay and data stored on the secondary storage is transferred to the primary storage as and when required because the primary storage is very very fast secondary storage you can also call it as the auxiliary memory okay and uh, secondary storage is used for storing the copies of the data as well as programs so uh, primary storage you can call it as the volatile memory and secondary storage is considered to be non volatile memory why it is non volatile because it is external to the computer these are the secondary storage devices we have sequential access and then direct access like uh, we have like a uh, magnetic tapes okay film that is secondary storage so we will have like sequential access and then direct access in sequential access data can be accessed only in the sequence it is stored okay for example 1 2 3 4 it will be stored in that order okay so sequential access the storage device is magnetic tape okay magnetic tape is the sequential access so it can be used in applications like pay slip printing for example you are getting the oil one paper they will be 
okay pay slip it will be different like there will be holds huh? so pay slip that processing printing on uh, it is nothing but sequential access okay or maybe serial access it can be accessed one after the another if you can see the printer it will be one after the another so the type of the access devices will have punch paper type as i told you punch paper round 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 okay so punch paper tapes were the earlier devices of the data storage so data is coded into the paper tape as a combination of punch holes across the width of the tape and every row will be representing one character so data has to be coded on the tapes using this special coding systems and punch paper tapes are low cost storage medium and their storage capacity is unlimited but definitely paper can be tear you can tear the paper that is the thing but if you try to mishandle also it is a problem okay. so nowadays punch paper tapes are rarely being used because it can be where it can be tear or maybe somebody tries to misuse it that is the problem okay. so magnetic tape it is nothing but a ribbon of mylar which is coated with a thin layer of iron oxide material so the tape is stored into the cassette or maybe cartridge earlier you see that tape you have seen tape recorder put this thing and you can play okay so the, it's a iron oxide material it can be magnetized and data is recorded in the tape in the form of magnetized as well as non magnetized spots so magnetic tape drive we can read the data from the tape or write information to the tape and magnetic uh, the tape drive has a read or write head okay you can access and you can store the information as well and you will be having frames rows okay so that are nothing but the tracks where you can play this audio okay so here magnetic tape is nothing but a read write device you can read it you can write it okay you can replace it and so on okay so data can be written as well as erased as well a new data recorded on the same area okay so tape will have horizontal rows and then vertical columns that it is nothing but the tracks okay. so special computer codes are used for recording data on the tape normally like movie songs cinema songs everything you can record it okay and, and uh, there will be big tapes also like a cassette recorder normally you can see the movies as well okay. so most modern tapes have nine tracks it will be using ebc dic code for the data representation and actual number of characters that can be stored on an inch of tape you call it to be the tape density so storage capacity is very large and capacity it is measured as bytes per inch so normally tape densities will be 800 bpi okay or maybe 1600 bpi okay so tapes with higher densities maybe 6000 bpi is also possible and it can be of any size okay so uh, tapes if you can see the memory it can store only fixed length and maybe variable length records you can store variable length record you can store but only fixed length so between the consecutive records the computer is going to keep the fraction of the tape blank okay so this gap you can call it to be the interlock gap so when you read the information from the tape the drive is going to take a finite amount of time to physically stop when the end of the record is being reached okay so that interlock gap is going to avoid any loss of data so that is the gap so uh, as i told you variable uh, gap length record variable length record it will have fixed length it will have between that it will have a fixed gap or maybe interlock gap this is to avoid loss of data so there are advantages of magnetic tape it is <coughs> having high data density and virtually unlimited storage low cost cost effective very easy to handle and you can transfer from one computer to another okay just you should have the slot put it inside and you can play so limitations it supports only sequential access one after the other okay tapes are sensitive to dust okay humidity or maybe temperature hence you should handle it very very carefully and then you have the direct access storage devices where you have the random access so data at any location can be accessed directly without the sequence earlier we had sequential access one after the another now random access no no sequential okay so typical devices are nothing but magnetic disks and then magnetic drum these are the examples
if you take in the case of magnetic disc it is circular in shape it is coated with a magnetic material so the discs are mounted on the disc pack on a central shaft so the disc in the disc pack it will be moving at a same speed similarly in the same direction okay so the discs are considered to be hard discs or maybe fixed disc and hard disc you can install it permanently in the drive or maybe in the remove removal cartridge okay so data is recorded as magnetic spots on the coating of the disc and maybe you will have uh, one okay and uh, absence means zero if it is present means one absence means it is zero and you will be having the 8 bit ebc uh, ebc dic for representing or maybe recording the data on the disc and information is stored on both the surfaces okay so that is the advantage so every disc will be having concentric circles if you can see the cd uh, earlier cd small circles it will be having that is nothing but the track you shouldn't disturb the track okay so it will be running on the one one point and with that it will be rounded okay so all the corresponding tracks in all the surface you can call it as a cylinder and information is not stored on the outer surface of the upper plate and the lower surface of the bottom plate okay. so this is the rotation it will be rotating at a uniform speed and this is the axis arm movement okay you have the read as well as the right head okay. so outer tracks may maybe it can contain data bits because the circumference is greater maybe the outer uh, tracks might contain some data bits but in most of the disk each track will be uh, storing the same number of characters so which means that inner uh, tracks smaller circumference means it is more closely packed than the outer tracks because outer tracks more circumference it will be elaborately packed but here it's very close equally uh, packed so magnetic disk it's a random or maybe direct access storage device so data is read from or maybe written on the disk surface with the use of read write heads and the heads are a flying type and they do not come in contact with the surface of the disk we'll be having the moving head system also so we'll be having a read write head for each disk surface so the head is mounted on the access arm which moves in and out so every head moves horizontally across the surface and you can access each track individually okay then you have the fixed head system so the uh, the fixed head system the access arm does not move but in moving head system it will be moving okay so here in the fixed head system we will be having a large number of read and write head, uh, read as well as write head it will not be moving okay so oh, there will be a uh, read and write heads for each track and it will be distributed across the surface of the disk okay so here the data access will be very fast because it is not movable okay so extra space is also needed for accommodating all the heads and data required to access the data i mean the this data stored on the disk depends on the seek time and latency time so here seek time is nothing but time required for positioning this read write head over the appropriate track and latency time latency means some delay okay so time required to spin the required data under the head okay so that is the latency time or maybe the search time so this is the floppy disk you would have seen this one have you seen this one yeah. okay so floppy disk it's a flexible mylar coated with the iron oxide so the disk i think the top one you can move it like this okay so there is this is enclosed in a square plastic jacket to protect the surface of the disk from dust okay and floppy disk is inserted into the floppy disk drive to read or maybe write information so read and write head will be making in contact with the floppy disk and after that only you can read data or you can write the data so we'll have 8 inch floppy disk 51 by 4 inch floppy disk 31 by 2 inch floppy disk okay so floppy disk can be single sided or it can be double sided so data can be written with with the contact with the read and write head so we'll be having 51 by 4 31 by 2 single side or maybe double side okay so double side means it is required to read data from the double sided disk so disk will be having two heads one a single sided drive has only one head floppy disk as i told you two two types is there okay so floppy disk very much popular because very small 
very cheap, less cost effective, very efficient, and it can store data in the line as well. Okay. So floppy disk you can you can uh, be made portable also from one computer to another computer. It can be made portable. Also, you can carry it in your uh, pocket and so on. And then Winchester disk and magnetic drum. Now we are not using this one, but the disks here in the Winchester disk it is actually permanently enclosed in a sealed container. So the disks are uh, coated with a special lubricant to reduce the friction because when the read and write head there will be some friction to reduce that special lubricant is actually coated and definitely you can come up with the increase in the number of tracks on the disk and higher storage density as well. So Winchester disks are very fast, it is very reliable and it can be used in the micro computers. Then you have the magnetic drum. So it's actually a cylinder where the outer surface is coated with a magnetic material. The motor is going to rotate on the cylinder at a very constant uniform speed and data is recorded from the tracks of the drum as magnetic spots. So there will be a read and write heads as well which will be positioned away from the surface of the drum. So here data is read from and written onto the drum with the help of these heads and drum is rotating at relatively fast speed. Normally, it will be having like several thousand rotations per minute. Okay, so magnetic drum have faster data transfer rate as compared to disk, but their storage capacity is limited. So that is the main problem with the magnetic drum. But also, as I told you, magnetic drum, this uh, Winchester disk is rarely being used nowadays. Then you have optical devices or maybe optical disk. We will be having a rotating disk which is coated with a reflective metal. You can record the data for which the laser beam is going to focus on this spinning disk. Okay, so laser beam, maybe you can have the on and off. Maybe you can set it at varying variable rates also. So the tiny holes or maybe the spots you have are burned with the metal coating along the track. When data on the is being stored on the optical disk, maybe if it is red, a less powerful beam is focused on the disk surface. So the storage capacity is very much and of course the disk access time is very much fast as well. With optical devices you can come up with more storage and it is relatively fast as well. But only thing is that it is a permanent storage device, it is a very very permanent ok. So data once written it cannot be erased, it is not erasable uh, memory ok. So it is a read only storage medium also. So you can call CD-ROM, CD-ROM is actually a form of the optical device. You will have optical card as well, Okay, you will have optical laser encoded strip as well which can store 2 MB of data. In these cards like credit card, Okay, like you can form uh, like a storing credit records or maybe medical history of people. For example, you are going to a shopping mall, you will be having one small card Okay, to add the discount values. Or maybe you go to uh, buy uh, some gold okay, in, in some jewelry shop, they will be giving some small card okay, so that you can use it. That is optical card. And then optical tape, it is similar to manual tape. Optical laser techniques are used to write data on the uh, tapes and uh, like optical uh, disc, uh, the optical tapes also will be having read only storage devices.